This is All India Radio. In the program Spotlight, now we bring you a discussion on Agra Metro Project and Mass Rapid Transit Systems. The participants are Dr. Kirti S. Parekh, former member, Niti Aayog, and Chetan Chauhan, journalist. Today, the Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurated the Agra Metro, one of the first metros in a smaller cities in India. Dr. Parekh, how do you see the inauguration of a metro in a small city like Agra, which will also connect Taj Mahal in the metro network? So how do you see this inauguration today? It is the beginning of the construction of the metro. It's not being inaugurated, but it's an excellent beginning. If you look at the rate at which many of our cities are growing, if all the cities grow at the rate they grew between, say, 2001 and 2011, then by 2020, we would have something like 70 cities above 1 million population. It is certainly a public transport system of that kind we need to build in all of our cities, and we should not wait till the cities become a metropolis of 10 million plus and then try to build something. We should really think in terms of building a metro right when there are one or two million population. Like Agra is around two million now maybe. And it is certainly an excellent beginning from any point of view. Whether you want to consider energy security, reducing our import of petroleum products, then again metros are very critical because they can take away a large number of urban traffic from cars and scooters. Dr. Parikh, one important question that emanates from today's inauguration, Agra may be one of the smallest cities where the foundation stone for a metro line has been raised. Like other cities, Kanpur also, there was a foundation. Lucknow also has a metro. Jaipur also has a metro. Apart from that, bigger cities like Chennai, Mumbai, Bangalore also have a metro. But in many parts, we have seen that the metro pack on mobility in cities has been limited. So do you think that the cities need to expand metro in a much faster and a bigger way to have a positive impact in a quick time? Government is doing that. We have something like 20 cities where metro is operational or under construction. And two more have it has been sanctioned and 12 are proposed. So we intend to cover a large number of big cities with metro in near future. I hope it will take four or five years. This should be all realized. And it is extremely important because most of our cities suffer from such air pollution and they lead to thousands of premature deaths because of the severe air pollution that our cities have. And air pollution is not just confined to Delhi and large cities. It is also in small cities, medium time cities as well. So having metro where people will travel by public transport as far as possible and this will be run on electricity, we will reduce significantly the pollution, local pollution, apart from reducing our consumption of oil and diesel. Dr. Parekh, you spoke about air pollution. Agra, if you see in the month of October this year, Agra was one of the cities on the high particulate matter pollution, along with Meerut, Delhi, Faridabad, the entire Gangetic Plain. So... How would the metro has an issue of the last mile connectivity also? We have seen in Delhi, in many other cities, where the last mile connectivity is not there. The impact of metro on controlling air pollution is not very high. So on that aspect, what do you want to say? You raised a very important issue here because a large mile connectivity is important, excuse me, is important to attract as many people to using metro as well. Along with it is important that metro is run frequently the time to travel from home to your destination is comparable to traveling by your own car or scooter, and that is very critical. And for that, last mile connectivity is very critical. And I think what we need to do, we should have electric small buses running in the surrounding areas of metro stations, and they can be all have one common fare structure, fare ticket that allows you to go from one mode of transport to the other. So all, whether you travel by bus or metro, or minibus or so on, it should all have a part of the same ticket and same structure. Many cities have done this, and I'm sure we can do this also. And in today's world, with such a high penetration of IT and telephones and Internet, this should be possible to do it in such a way that we have very efficient public transport system so that people don't want to use their own car unless there is an emergency or where metro is not accessible or so on. You can have a digital smart card on your phone, which can help you to move from one public transport like bus to metro, vice versa, or even if you want to hire a cycle at a metro station, you can do that for your reaching your home. So technology, I think, provides a lot of opportunities to experiment, and the Prime Minister has also said that the use of technology in public transport 
इज अ बिग वे फॉरवर्ड ही ऑल्सो स्पोक अबाउट आत्मनिर्भर भारत विद दिस लिंग ऑफ द फाउंडेशन स्टोन इंडिया इज मूविंग टूवर्ड्स आत्मनिर्भर भारत एंड बाय दैट ही मेंट दैट मोस्ट ऑफ द मेट्रो इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर नाउ द कोचेज द रेल लाइन द सिग्नलिंग सिस्टम इज बींग बिल्ड इन इंडिया सो इफ यू सी फ्रॉम द फर्स्ट मेट्रो विच केम इन इंडिया इन डेली वेन एवरीथिंग केम फ्रॉम जपैन is it a huge transformation and how do you think that it will help the indian industry also let me begin cycles are very important and if you see it in city like mumbai which is already developed and highly you know congested it would be virtually impossible to think about laying cycle tracks which is really still possible to have cycle tracks all around but in a smaller cities 1 million 2 million population there is still a scope and we can build cycle tracks right now at uh, much less cost than it would cost you to say it in delhi and so on i think along with metro the government should also think in terms of providing structure of the city such that people can cycle to most of the small trips and take public transport like metro or other things in uh, for larger trips and then we can certainly have a very efficient urban transport system but the other point that you raised about atmanirbhar bharat i think at one stage we were building coaches for railways in a state of the art factory in india and exporting coaches all over now we are even importing coaches what and that we build capacity and capability to build this uh, metro trains in the country but we must keep on doing research and development so that things to remain the state of the art and that the world wants it from us and i think atmanirbhar but atmanirbhar forever is what we need it to be because if you really become atmanirbhar now and 5 years later if you have become obsolete then you will start again exporting latest technology or latest product from abroad so atmanirbhar requires to be also in the development of technology and new products and processes so basically we have to be atmanirbhar in the area of metro construction metro coaches we have to look at futuristic coaches which we metros will use and also we are able to export them to other countries also in a way it becomes a business model the way the country is developing metros the central government the state governments even the private sector is developing metros don't yeah. you think that the indian the domestic industry needs to work on this so that we can have a huge industry in developing for the metro coaches metro signaling system huge amount of money will be saved for a government also and the industry can also earn a lot yeah i am sure this we can do that because metro construction begins now in many places it will take 3 or 4 or 5 years before the, your tracks are ready and you are willing to have the coaches and so on so you can really motivate and encourage indian entrepreneurs to say you set up factories and produce coaches of this specification and this transport this thing by 2 years or 3 years down the line i think a number of them would come forward dr parekh you also spoke about energy saving the metros can help us to reduce our dependence on imports of the fuel so how much can the metro contribute in fuel saving and also energy efficiency see energy efficiency in, in two ways electric traction provided we generate this electricity from non polluting sources with little emissions right very little emission an electric train is running so to the extent that people travel by metros they are not traveling by their own car or scooters or even buses i would say so to the extent that that the private vehicle is transferred to metro transport that many trips to that extent country would need less petrol and diesel and that's where we will save this urban areas consumption is a substantial part of our total consumption of petrol and diesel dr parekh this has been a long debate going on for the last maybe 20 years whether the metro should be developed in a private sector or in the public sector there have been experiments of doing it in a ppp like the airport line in delhi the hyderabad and some others but mr shridharan the former dmrc chairperson has always advocated the public mode for delhi metro i would say there is a strong case you can make here in this case for public transport system you can have a parts of it run or operated by private contractors but i think by and large it should be run as a public transport system number of advantages of doing this you need to make sure that people use this metro and so the pricing structure has to be appropriately designed 
Of course, uh, the danger with public sector is they just make it too cheap and the matter has become a big sort of a stone under the neck of the government and their budget. It keeps on putting a huge draft on the budget. But I think if we are clear on these, that matters have to be somewhat self-sufficient and that whatever subsidy or support you give financial should be clearly defined as to the reason for this and should be not forever but linked to certain structures and parameters. I think it is possible to do that if you have a good independent but publicly owned system with less interference, with virtually no interference from the centre, from the government on its operation, then it can run efficiently. Dr. Parikh, combating uh, climate change and the metro has been contributory in that because of the metro, the carbon footprints of cities have reduced. So how do you think that India pursuing metros in cities can reduce the carbon footprint? See, if you think about the carbon footprint, there are two main sectors where we have to take action. One is the power, electricity generation. There we are pushing significantly and rapidly renewables. And the way the cost of solar photovoltaics and battery technologies are coming down, we will see that electricity sector, we can make, have significant penetration of renewables and reduction of emission from that. Then comes the transport sector. The transport sector has a number of opportunities to cut down this. One is electric vehicles, can would be public transport and metros and so on. And third would be people use cycles and tracks and walking. For that, we need to make cycle tracks, as we already discussed earlier. We need to have electric vehicles. That is possible. But I think there will be large economies of scale having electric metro system taking large number of people. We want us to recognize if cities become 10 or 12 million, even if everyone is driving electric vehicles, while we may say there is less pollution, the congestion and the time required would be enormous. It is only there that underground metros can make the cities function with some degree of efficiency. Inefficiencies of functioning of cities has a huge economic cost. So you can easily justify that in our large cities, we need to build metros. And then easier to build this in the smaller cities and start from the beginning as a metro. As the city grows, the metro network can grow also. Dr. Parikh, we were in the planning commission for a long time. The Planning Commission also came out with a report on the impact of uh, the reduction of uh, the GDP growth on uh, India's climate change goals. So what do you think that are we on the path to achieve our climate change goals? We had committed at the Paris conference in 2015 what is called our nationally committed goals and development actions, which said that we are going to reduce our emission intensity, that is kilogram of carbon CO2 emitted per, say, 100 rupees worth of GDP. That, we say, we will reduce that emission intensity by around 3 to 35 percent, mm -hmm. and uh, we will have a non-fossil electricity generating capacity about 40 percent. I think we are going to reach all these goals by 2030 was the target year compared to 2005. And we are certainly going to reach this. And I think we can do even better. And I think it is important for most countries to do much better than what they committed in the Paris Agreement. Now, often people say that India has, uh, and I have also been saying that India has really very little responsibility for the threat of climate change, that we have contributed very little to the total stock of carbon in the atmosphere, which is causing global warming or a threat of climate change. Nonetheless, we are extremely vulnerable. And we have an interest in motivating, shaming, you could say, promoting, encouraging others to take effective action. Many actions, which are also in our own interest, in a larger social interest, and we are doing a lot of it, actually. I must say that Prime Minister Modi has accelerated this process of renewable power and electric vehicles, etc., which all help in reducing our carbon emissions. The metro plays extremely important role because the cities in the coming years will be one of the biggest emitters of carbon and contributors to climate change. With this, uh, I want to thank you, Dr. Parikh. Thank you very much. You were listening to a discussion on Agra Metro Project and Mass Rapid Transit Systems. The participants were Dr. Kirti Esparik, former member, Niti Ayog, and Chetan Chauhan, journalist. This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of All India Radio. You can listen to it on our mobile app, News on AIR. This program is also available on our website, newsonair.com. You may email your opinion about this program at airnsdtalks at gmail.com.